Welcome everyone to the next episode in our Night Spring series. If you are new, I recommend pausing and watching the introduction video which breaks down the nature of the TV show before proceeding further. With that out of the way, grab some popcorn and let's check out today's episode of Night Springs. Tonight's episode, An Absence of Creativity. Hello, Martha. What did you want to show me? Oh, Lydia, thank God you're here. Please, it's in the basement. It isn't there, but oh, I can't look straight at it. Yes, uh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, who, who uh, uh, how did you get here? Well, I'm trying to work. Did you put this thing here? In a way, to be more precise, I put everything here but that. Really? But what is it? Oh, I guess the temptation is to call it a hole, but it's really an absence. A profound lack of reality. In Martha's basement? Yes. I was doing so well, too. I came up with two old ladies and put something really weird in the basement. It was a great start, but I'm completely blocked now. I can't imagine what I was up to. Well, surely it's just an ordinary basement. Is it? Why did you call your friend here, then? Well, I, I don't know. Oh, well. Couldn't you just ignore it? Oh, no, I couldn't do that. It would probably turn into a plot hole. It might be one already. Could sink the whole enterprise. Oh, my. Listen, ladies, not to be rude, but I'm really not at all sure where I'm going with this, and you're just not helping. You should just go back upstairs for a cup of coffee while I try to figure out what I'm up to. Well, if you think that's best. Maybe I should just stop here. Or is that too moronic? Is that too moronic? Indeed. Who can tell? It's a fine line between the stupid and the sublime. The night springs. An absence of creativity has a story that is rather on the nose. It does not hide what it is trying to be a commentary on the creative process. Ideas for a story are numerous, but bringing them to fruition is difficult. The plot involves a creator who wanted to begin his narrative by sending two old women into a basement. However, he could not think of a specific thing to draw their attention. Should it be an intruder? Should it be a magical artifact? A monster? By not knowing how he should proceed, the creator causes a void in reality. From now on, I will be referring to any blank part of a story that is either never explained or contradicts the rest of the work as a narrative void. With a simple enough plot, it is a little difficult to find many connections to the other parts of the Remedy setting. However, if we look at it from a certain angle, we can squeeze some things from it. Specifically, it's linked to how the Dark Presence abuses the power of creation. As we will see, these narrative voids can grow into something that the writer never intended. Before arriving in Bright Falls, Alan has a nightmare that begins with him running over a hitchhiker. Not much is said about the man other than he was a character in a story Alan was working on. In the novelization of Alan Wake, we get more detail. Alan began to work on a new story at some point in his past. However, the story was never finished. In fact, it barely got started before being abandoned. His experience working on it echoes the creator of this Night Springs episode, but instead of starting off with two old ladies going into the basement, he began with a driver running over a hitchhiker. In both cases, the author could not figure out how to proceed past the initial hook. The conversation in An Absence of Creativity offers two paths forward, ignore it and allow it to become a plot hole, or abandon the entire story. The second road is what Alan took. He never finished the story. If this were any old setting, that would be the end of it. But given what we know about the Dark Place, even if a story is abandoned, it does not simply cease to exist. 
The Hitchhiker returns in Alan's nightmare. The character remembers being created for the sole purpose of being killed. He wasn't allowed to have any resolution because Alan never finished the story. Instead of a small void like the mystery of what's in the basement, the entire story is a void since it was never written. While this character is pretty self-contained to Alan's nightmare, narrative voids can end up becoming more than a bad memory. This brings us to the Dark Presence. Let's look at the specific void that is arguably responsible for the entire plot of Alan Wake. After Barbara Jagger drowned in the lake, Tom the Poet wrote her back to life, but he did not give a logical reason within the story about how she came back. The question of how she was resurrected is a narrative void, a contrivance that is never given a rational reason to work within the rules of the poem. In the Night Springs episode, the creator worries that ignoring the thing he left in the basement may turn into a plot hole. Zane didn't care if it did. All he wanted was Barbara back. As a result, this void was seized by the Dark Presence and used as a vehicle for its escape. It hitchhiked along with Barbara's body to ascend from the Dark Place, freed from its prison. The role of the author is to avoid leaving these voids in their work especially in this setting, where they can be used by dark forces to twist the story. Like an evil genie who intentionally takes advantage of the vague phrasing of a wish. Alan's writing process evolved over the course of the games. In one TV rant, he acknowledges how one small detail can influence the entire work. A story is not a machine that does what you tell it. A story is a beast with a life of its own. You can create it, shape it, but as the story grows, it starts wanting things of its own. Change one thing and you set off a chain reaction of events that spreads through the whole thing. The characters have to be true to themselves. The events need to follow a logic that fits the story. A single flaw and the magic is gone. The story dies. Alice dies. Later, while talking to Dr. Rachel Meadows, she questions why he cannot abuse the power of creation. Assuming I believe this? Why don't you simply, I don't know, write yourself some superpowers? It's not quite that simple. You need to follow certain laws of drama, I suppose. You need to think about consistency and symbolism. Often what you write isn't anywhere near as important as what you imply. There are things out there that will take advantage of your mistakes. While Alan could certainly do this, he would fall into the same trap that Zane did. Making such a radical change in the plot or rules of the story would create a cascading effect, creating more voids that could be seized upon by dark entities. At this point, he knows better. Cynthia Weaver mentions as much while at the power plant. And then Tom started writing and, and woke the darkness up. He tried to bring her back, but you can't do that. There are no free rides like that. I'm starting to realize that. In that case, young man, perhaps you're a smarter man than Tom was. By the time we get around to the hotline calls in the AWE DLC of Control, Alan has a completely new style. He writes short sentences, overly specific, leaving nothing to chance. The style then. Lose the fat. Make it clear. Ugly. Functional. Present. Be blunt. Only the brutal truth. Cut through the reality, tear it apart, rewrite it. Be clever, make them do the work. Form the image in their minds. They make it, you just imply. Incept. They're drawn to the mystery, obsessed. You set it up, they put it together. Their interpretation, and there's only one because you give them no choice. And they believe in it. Because it's theirs now. In summation, this episode of Night Springs has less to do with the story itself, but focuses on the implications of creating plot holes. It offers a warning to anyone seeking to create something of artistic value. One unresolved thread is enough to break down the whole enterprise. In a world where dark entities can seize upon mistakes, making sure to address every narrative void is important. Imagine what would happen if the creator ignored the absence of reality in the basement, if something like the Dark Presence got a hold of it, the Void could be twisted into a new portal for it to escape, or create a monster that would rampage through the story. By filling in the blanks, a dark mind can find a way to twist any flaw to its own end, to seize upon vague descriptions and forcing a headcanon upon the story, one that does not serve the plot, 
but serves the person coming up with the headcanon. It truly becomes a death of the author scenario. The author's intentions are meaningless, only how it can be interpreted is relevant. We have seen the Dark Presence take advantage of these mistakes in the past. Entities of its like still exist within the Dark Place. Any future manuscripts will have to be written to avoid these voids. While the plot of Alan Wake 2 seems to focus on the Cult of the Tree, there is always the possibility that other forces may get involved. This concludes my breakdown of An Absence of Creativity. See you in the next episode of Night Springs. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like and subscribe to receive updates on future uploads. If you would like to help support the channel, a Patreon has been set up and the link is in the description below. Have a great day and peace be with you all.